to Darya online training module. Ship shore. Safety. Checklist. The means of access to the ship should be safe and may consist of an appropriate gangway or accommodation ladder with a properly secured safety net fitted to it. Ship to provide the gangway with a sufficient clear run of space and so maintain safe and convenient access to the ship at all states of tide and changes in the ship's free board. Near the access ashore, appropriate life-saving equipment should be provided. A life buoy should be available on board the ship near the gangway. The access should be safely and properly illuminated during darkness. Persons who have no legitimateness on board, or who do not have the master's permission, should be refused access to the ship. The terminal should control access to the jetty or berth in agreement with the ship. Ships should remain adequately secured in their moorings. Alongside berth ranging of the ship should be prevented by keeping all mooring lines tight. Attention should be given to the movement of the ship caused by wind, currents, tides or passing ships and the operation in progress. Means should be provided to enable quick and safe release of the ship in case of an emergency. In ports where anchors are required to be used, special consideration should be given to this matter. Irrespective of the mooring method used, the emergency release operation should be agreed, taking into account the possible risks involved. Anchors not in use should be properly secured. Communication should be maintained in the most efficient way between the responsible officer on duty on the ship and the responsible person ashore. When telephones are used, the telephone both on board and ashore should be continuously manned by a person who can immediately contact other party. When RT-VHF systems are used, the units should preferably be portable and carried by the supervisor or a person who can get in touch with his respective supervisor immediately. Where fixed systems are used, the guidelines for telephones should apply. The selected primary and backup systems of communication should be recorded on the checklist and necessary information on telephone numbers and or channels to be used should be exchanged and recorded. The telephone and portable RT-VHF systems should comply with the appropriate safety requirements. Emergency towing off pennants Fire wires, should be positioned both on the offshore bow and quarter of the ship. At a buoy mooring, emergency towing off pennants should be positioned on the side opposite to the hose string. There are various methods for rigging emergency towing off pennants currently in use. Some terminals may require a particular method to be used and the ship should be advised accordingly. Firefighting equipment on board should be correctly positioned and ready for immediate use. Adequate units of fixed or portable equipment should be stationed to cover the shore and ship's cargo deck. The ship's fire main systems should be pressurized or be capable of being pressurized at short notice. Both ship and shore should ensure that their fire main systems can be interconnected in a quick and easy way utilizing, if necessary, the International Shore Fire Connection. Manifold hose should be in a good condition and properly fitted and rigged so as to prevent strain and stress beyond design limitations. All flange connections should be fully bolted and any other types of connections should be properly secured. Cargo manifolds slash hoses should be indelibly marked so as to allow the identification of the products for which they are planned.
ship shore manifold to be aligned accordingly. Both side lines to be leak tested prior starting operation. A positive means of confirming that both ship and shore cargo systems are isolated and drain should be in place and used to confirm that it is safe to remove blank flanges prior to connection. The means should provide protection against the pollution due to unexpected and uncontrolled release of product from the cargo system and injury to personnel due to pressure in the system suddenly being released in an uncontrolled manner. All scuppers on board should be properly plugged during the operations. Accumulation of water should be drained off periodically. The ship's manifolds should ideally be provided with fixed drip trays in accordance with OSMF. All drip trays should be emptied in an appropriate manner whenever necessary but always after completion of the specific operation. When only raining, the scuppers may be kept open provided that continuous watch is maintained for any trace oil sheen. Unused cargo and bunker line connections should be closed and blanked. Blank flanges should be fully bolted and other types of fittings, if used, properly secured. All openings to cargo, ballast and bunker tanks should be closed and gas tight except ongoing venting. Closed alloging and sampling systems should be used where required by international, national or local regulations and agreements. Where applicable sea and overboard valves to be closed and secured and sealed especially where cargo lines and ballast systems are interconnected. Remote operating controls for such valves should be identified and marked in order to avoid inadvertent opening, the security of the valves in question should be checked visually. Ani doors should not be left open unattended. External doors, windows and portholes in the accommodation should be closed during cargo operations. Engine room vents may be left open. However, consideration should be given to closing them where such action would not adversely impact on the safe and efficient operation of the engine room spaces served. If the ship is fitted, or is required to be fitted, with an inert gas system IGS, the following points should be physically checked. All recording equipment should be switched on, calibrated and operating correctly. Prior to commencement of cargo operations, each cargo tank atmosphere should be checked to verify an oxygen content of 8% or less by volume. Inerted cargo tanks should be kept at a positive pressure at all times. The ship should be able to move under its own power at short notice, unless permission to immobilize the ship has been granted by the port authority and the terminal representative. Certain conditions may have to be met for permission to be granted. The operation should be under constant control and supervision of sufficient watch keepers on ship and ashore. Supervision should be aimed at preventing the development of hazardous situations. The controlling personnel on the ship and in the terminal should maintain effective communications with their respective supervisors. All personnel connected with the operations should be familiar with the dangers of the substances handled and should wear appropriate protective clothing and equipment. At all times during the ship's stay at the terminal, a sufficient number of personnel should be present on board the ship and in the shore installation to deal with an emergency. The operations procedure should be discussed and agreed upon by the ship and shore representatives prior to the start of the operations. Agreed arrangements should be formally recorded and signed by both ship and terminal representatives. 
any change in the agreed procedure that could affect the operation should be discussed by both parties and agreed upon. A record of the information exchange as per key meeting or a pre-operation meeting should be formally made. An emergency shutdown procedure should be agreed between ship and shore, formally recorded and signed by both the ship and terminal representative. The agreement should state the circumstances in which operations have to be stopped immediately. Due regard should be given to the possible introduction of dangers associated with the emergency shutdown procedure. An MSDS should be available on request to the receiver from the terminal or ship supplying the product. As a minimum, such information sheets should provide the constituents of the product by chemical name, name in common usage, UN number and the maximum concentration of any toxic components. Information on cargo constituents and hazards should be available during the cargo transfer to enable the adoption of proper precautions. In addition, some port states require such information to be readily available during cargo transfer and in the event of an accidental spill. This is particularly relevant to cargos that could contain H2S, benzene or lead additives. the ISC to be available readily for use in case of emergency to use shore water supply if ship fire pumps not working. The connection must meet the standard requirements and if not actually connected prior to commencement of operations, should be readily available for use in an emergency. Agreement should be reached, and recorded, as to the venting system to be used for the operation, taking into account the nature of the cargo and international, national or local regulations and agreements. There are three basic systems for venting tanks, open to atmosphere via open knowledge ports, protected by suitable flame screens. Fixed venting systems which includes inert gas systems. To shore through a vapor collection system. ship will require the means to enable closed monitoring of tank contents, either by a fixed gauging system or by using portable equipment passed through a vapor lock, and preferably backed up by an independent overfill alarm system. It is a requirement of many terminals that when the ship is ballasting, loading or discharging, it operates without recourse to opening a lidge and siding ports. The operation of the PV valves and or high-velocity vents should be checked using the testing facility provided by the manufacturer. Furthermore, it is imperative that an adequate check is made, visually or otherwise, to ensure that the checklift is actually operating the valve. On occasion, a seized or stiff vent has caused the checklift drive pin to shear and the ship's personnel to assume, with disastrous consequences, that the vent was operational. Where required, a vapor return line will be used to return flammable vapors from the cargo tanks to shore. The maximum and minimum operating pressures and any other constraints associated with the operation of the vapor return system should be discussed and agreed by ship and shore personnel. The alarm should provide audible and visual indication and should be set at a level that will enable operations to be shut down prior to the tank being overfilled. Under normal operations, the cargo tank should not be filled higher than the level at which the overfill alarm is set. Individual overfill alarms should be tested at the tank to ensure their proper operation prior to commencing loading. Measures are to be taken to maintain the continuous electrical path between ship and shore pipework provided by the ship, shore hoses or metallic arms, stray electric currents, 
mainly from corrosion prevention systems, otherwise the electric sparks can be caused at the flange faces when hoses are being connected and disconnected. The passage of these currents is usually prevented by an insulating flange inserted at each jetty manifold outlet or incorporated in the construction of metallic arms. In order to avoid cargo running back when discharge from a ship is stopped, either due to operational needs or excessive back pressure, the terminal should confirm that it has a positive system that will prevent unintended flow from the shore facility onto the ship. Smoking on board the ship may only take place in places specified by the master in consultation with the terminal representative. No smoking is allowed on the jetty and the adjacent area except in buildings and places specified by the terminal representative in consultation with the master. Places that are directly accessible from the outside should not be designated as places where smoking is permitted. A naked light or open fire comprises the following, flame, spark formation naked electric light or any surface with a temperature that is equal to or higher than the auto ignition temperature of the products handled in the operation ship short telephones should comply with the requirements for explosion proof construction except when placed and used in a safe space in the accommodation mobile phones and pagers should not be used in hazardous areas unless approved for such use by a competent authority any torch or lights portable or fixed to be extrinsically safe and approved type battery operated hand torches flashlights should be of a safe type approved by a competent authority. Damaged units, even though they may be capable of operation, should not be used. Fixed VHF slash UHF and AIS equipment should be switched off or on low power, 1 watt or less, unless the master, in consultation with the terminal, has established the conditions under which the installation may be used safely. Portable VHF slash UHF sets should be of a safe type, approved by a competent authority. VHF radio telephone sets may only operate in the internationally agreed wave bands. Damaged units, even though they may be capable of operation, should not be used. The ship's radar installation should not be used unless the master in consultation with the terminal representative, has established the conditions under which the installation may be used safely. The ship's main radio station should not be used during the ship's stay in port, except for receiving purposes. The main transmitting aerials should be disconnected and earthed. Satellite communications equipment may be used normally, unless advised otherwise. The use of portable electrical equipment on wandering leads should be prohibited in hazardous zones during cargo operations and the equipment preferably removed from the hazardous zone. Telephone cables in use in the ship, shore communication system should preferably be routed outside the hazardous zone. Window type air conditioning units should be disconnected from their power supply. It is essential that a positive pressure be maintained inside the accommodation and that procedures or systems are in place to prevent flammable or toxic vapors from entering accommodation spaces. This can be achieved by air conditioning or similar systems, which draw clean air from non-hazardous locations. Air conditioning systems should not be operated on 100% recirculation. Pump rooms should be mechanically ventilated and systems should maintain a safe atmosphere throughout the pump room, should be kept running throughout cargo handling operations. The gas detection system, if fitted, should be functioning correctly. In addition to the means of routine access, a safe and quick emergency escape route should be available both on board and ashore. On board the ship, it may consist of a lifeboat ready for immediate use, 
preferably at the after end of the ship clear of the moorings. There are numerous factors which will help determine whether cargo or ballast operations should continue. Discussion between the terminal and the ship should identify limiting factors, which could include, wind speed, direction and the effect on hard arms, on mooring integrity and on gangways. Swell effects at exposed terminals on mooring integrity or gangway safety. Such limitations should be clearly understood by both parties. The criteria for stopping cargo, disconnecting hoses or arms and vacating the berth should be written in the remarks column of the checklist. In states that are signatories to SALAS, the ISPS code requires that the ship security officer and the port facility security officer coordinate the implication of their respective security plans with each other. If the ship is fitted, or is required to be fitted, with an inert gas system IGS, the following statements should be addressed. The IGS is fully operational and in good working order. Deck seals, or equivalent, are in good working order. Liquid levels in pressure, vacuum breakers are correct. All fixed and portable oxygen analyzers should be calibrated and checked as required by the company and or manufacturer's instructions. The inline oxygen analyzer, recorder and sufficient portable oxygen analyzers should be working properly. Each individual tank IG valve should be fitted with a locking device under the control of a responsible officer. It is normal and safe to keep all individual tank IG supply valves, if fitted, open in order to prevent inadvertent under or over pressurization. In this mode of operation, each tank pressure will be the same as the deck main IG pressure and thus the PV breaker will act as a safety valve in case of excessive over or under pressure. If individual tank IG supply valves are closed for reasons of potential vapor contamination, then the status of the valve should be clearly indicated to all those involved in cargo operations. In the case of failure of the IG plant, the cargo discharge, the ballasting and tank cleaning should cease and the terminal to be advised. Under no circumstances should the ship's officers allow the atmosphere in any tank to fall below atmospheric pressure. If the ship is fitted with a crude oil washing COW, system, and intends to cow, the following statements should be addressed. The pre-arrival cow checklist, as contained in the approved cow manual, has been satisfactorily completed. The cow checklists for use before, during and after cow, as contained in the approved cow manual, are available and being used. If the ship is planning to tank clean alongside, the following statements should be addressed. Tank cleaning operations are planned during the ship's stay alongside the shore installation. If yes, the procedures and approvals for tank cleaning have been agreed. Permission has been granted for gas freeing operations. It should be confirmed that all necessary approvals have been obtained to permit the ship to undertake gas freeing operations while alongside and the checklist should be annotated accordingly.